day-to-day -day living at the farm in Oak Brook. Please join us in listening to the remarkable story from the life and times of Michael Butler. In this podcast series, you'll be hearing stories from the primary themes of Michael Butler's life and memoirs. Politics, polo, theater, and love. Please subscribe via iTunes so you don't miss a single podcast. And we'll see you on the other side. This email coming on the day after an article about me in the Chicago Tribune magazine brought immediate memories from way back when the roads in Oak Brook were all gravel. I remember running out with Sister Jory after a rain dressed in our slickers to inspect the deep puddles of water to see any critters that may be hiding there or in a toboggan being towed by dad in his Duesenberg to the top of the hill at 31st and Spring Road so we could slide down, maybe making the bridge over Salt Creek. In a basket saddle, being on a lead pony with dad as he inspected the polo fields or held up to the tremendous musky lace bosom of my great-grandmother in her carriage when she was paying us a visit or being on skates playing hockey with dad and all the stable hands when the creek froze over. Sometimes we could skate all the way up to polo field number one. And about ponies, they were something really important. After grooming and passing inspection by Captain Calhoun, the head of the stables, we would gallop out for the entire day. Purpose of those trips usually was to play war with the enemy, usually Brother Frank's own gang, or joining forces with them to remove the bridge boards and claim tribute from Colonel McCormick's 16 cylinder Cadillac when he came en route to play polo, or with Frank and Jory covering ourselves with a horse sheet to make us invisible. We ran across international polo field during and thus stopping a major match, or walking up the hill to Butler School, being asked by a peace officer if I needed a ride. In those days, of course, they were called police peace officers. They weren't called cops or anything like that. Hang on the enormous combine which was parked in the tall center section of the old Oak Brook garage, going to the rail spur in Hinsdale with the cowboys to herd horses, which could come in from the ranch in the Black Hills to the farm. And at those trips being worn by Edna, Cal's wife, not to get within a block of the railroad tracks when the new Zephyr went through we might get sucked under. The big house of the family on First Street in Hinsdale was then the largest in town. When we were driven to Monroe School, a man would ride in the passenger seat with a sawed-off shotgun next to the driver whose handgun was holstered on the side of the brake for the Cadillac. I remember walking the trap lines with John Boyd on Salt Creek where he was after mink, getting free hamburgers from Mr. Porter who managed the golf course, or visiting Mrs. Radice whenever she was baking to help her taste the cooking, of course. Earl Horgan, who ran the farm, showing us how to curry the cattle en route to the shows where he won many prizes. Competing in the family seat and hands classes at the annual Hinsdale Horse Show, 
which later became the Oakbrook Horse Show, before gangsters took over the Chicago horse show scene, or caught smoking behind the barn and being forced to smoke more until I was sick. Going to Mr. Amaker's house, Natoma, which later became mine, to get free chocolate milk from our dairy, which he ran, knowing that I could ride a pony all day and still be on our property. An age of wondrous innocence and wondrous times. Please subscribe via iTunes so you don't miss a single podcast. And we'll see you on the other side.